Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Whether you are a sales professional, not in sales, but interested in helping people solve problems, or a founder CEO who is looking to grow your business, you'll find practical tools, stories, and experience you can apply to your role. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and I'm here with Mike Simmons, the co-founder of Catalyst Sale. Hello, Mike. Hey, Jody. Mike, we are just a little bit into the new year. How's 2019 been for you so far? 2019 is awesome. I feel like it. I feel like it's been a year since we've spoken. <laughs> well, we're at the point in the year where a lot of people have been through this cycle where they say next year is going to be different, fresh start, fresh year. I'm changing things. Maybe they set goals, but now we're deep enough in where that enthusiasm has went away. That momentum has been lost. And I want to make sure that we don't do that, that we find a way, even after that initial excitement over the new year has started to fade, that we can continue solid through the first quarter on into the middle of the year and so on. So this is kind of a kicking the year off episode, even though we're not right at the direct beginning of the year. Yeah, it's and it it's funny how it happens because it just happens over and over again. I mean, like there, you know, I was at an organization once where where we would do product releases for whatever reason. We decided that product releases would happen around the first of July, or that was the goal. And then all of a sudden, July fourth came, and we realized, hey, that probably wasn't the best time of year. And then you get into these the New Year stuff, and everybody likes to turn the page. We've talked before about you know, wiping the slate clean, you know, wiping off the whiteboard, hitting, pushing the reset button, all of those things. When we come up with these great ideas, these, these ideas of all the great stuff that we're going to accomplish, and many times we tend to overcomplicate those things. And we say, we're going to do 10 different things. And I would kind of argue, why don't you just start with one? You know, let's do one and let's execute on that. And once you've demonstrated the capability to do one, let's try to do two and execute on those two things. Once you've demonstrated an ability to be able to do two things, then let's maybe we add, a, we add three things and build up to the point where you start to see your capacity or your ability to execute diminish. And if your ability to execute diminishes, then you know, hey, I can be working on about three things at once. And that tends to be my number three. I can usually have three things kind of going at any given point in time and and feel okay with how the type of progress I'm making. So do you set bigger goals for the year or do you just say, these are the three things I'm working on right now? I always set bigger goals. It's always, and a lot of them are, are bigger ones where it's like, okay, the first one might be, I would like us to onboard five new clients in 2019 as an example. Well, I know that the, and then I know that the five new clients in 2019 aren't going to all kind of come together right out of the gate. And it's not like I can just flip the switch and start bringing on new clients in January. There's a lot of work that had to be done six months beforehand in order to get to that position. But yeah, I've always got the larger overarching goals. And I know we talked with Jeff Noel a little bit about this on, you know, mind and, and body and spirit and, and that first Noel podcast that went out there, but so yeah, there's always an over there are always a, a a couple of overarching goals, but then there've got to be some tactical things that I can do to move myself closer to those goals, and there can't be a lot of those. Like I can't go out. Let's talk about fitness. If I want to get to the point where I'm, you know, drop, you know, let's say I'm dropping 15 pounds, I can't. I'm not going to drop 15 pounds the first week of January. I'm probably not going to drop the 15 pounds in the first month of January. I'm probably not going to be successful dropping 15 pounds if I say, I'm going to go to the gym every day. I'm going to run a half marathon every day and I'm going to row you know, 10,000 meters every day. And that's a lot of stuff. Even though it was only three, that's a lot of stuff to do and it takes up a lot of time and it's unrealistic. What it might first be is, it might first say, you know, I am, I'm going to make sure that I get myself moving for X number of minutes in any given day. And then break that down a little bit further and say, here are the kind of exercises or the things that are going to constitute movement. And I know you've got a streak going with walking. Is that 
walking streak still going? We haven't talked about that in a while. It's been it's been it's been a year since we talked about it. Oh yeah, it's it's over a thousand days. It's closing in on three years in a row now. So you've got this objective where every day you go out and you why don't you share we share it with the audience? What what do you what do you what what's your what's what's this thing that you're doing? Every day for over a thousand days, I walk ten thousand steps or more every day. So pretty simple, pretty simple, but that's that's what it is. Now, 10,000 steps in a day is simple. 10,000 steps for nearly three years, that part's not so simple. Well, and it's amazing how quick it can break. Like if you just forget about it one day, or something happens. You, know, I, well, you live up in the Pacific Northwest, so sometimes weather gets in the way, but it doesn't get in the way of your steps, right? Yeah, it, it can't get in the way. But the weather, and there's a lot of other excuses where you could come up and say, well, just just for today, I'm not going to do that. But then all of a sudden the chain's broken. So, you know, you can't look back and say, I just did, I, I've got a thousand days or over a thousand days of, of 10,000 steps. And, you know, so you know, the, the first piece here, the first part of the process, and most of everybody who's listening has already gone through it. They've established some goals for the years. They've said, okay, here are what my objectives are. Here are the goals, these things I want to do differently. And then the next piece is, well, how are you going to measure it? Like, how are you going to be able to, Turn back and say yes. It's been successful. So with you with the steps, you use your phone, and you've got this uh, phone that you keep on yourself, and you track your steps. If you happen to forget your phone when you go on one of those walks, you're no longer tracking your five thousand steps that you did on the walk. So now you got to do them again. So you know, you've got to come up with these. You've got to come up with some tools or some measurables that you'll use to help keep yourself focused and let yourself know. Am I moving in the right direction? Do I need to rethink my goal? Do I need to adjust? Do I need to change this KPI, this you know, key performance indicator that um, helps me look back and say, yes, I'm moving to moving on the right path? Yeah, that that part is really important. I've set goals before where I will say, this is what I want to do. And then I don't put anything in place to measure it. Well, Okay, so yes, there's something in place to measure it, but I think it needs to be broken down even even more so you get an idea of progress. So you don't end up and and I'm going to use uh, weight loss for an example because that one's easy to break down for numbers and I know a lot of people set that even though it's not directly related to sales. I'm going to use that. But let's say to use a round number, somebody says I'm going to lose 10 pounds this year. And if that's all you put in place, you're going to get find yourself on November 15th about to go into Thanksgiving realizing, oh my goodness, not only did I not lose 10 pounds, I put on two and I'm about to face a big turkey and some pie. And so it's important to, when you put goals in place, to put metrics, like Mike said, some way to measure it, some way to keep yourself on track. Now, maybe that's breaking things down monthly. A step goal is pretty easy because you can say 10,000 steps per day. This is how I'm going to measure it. And it's a daily thing. And either you get it or you don't. Where something longer that's stretched out over the year, that's where you have to start thinking about how to keep yourself going. And we're deep enough into the year now where you can say, oh my goodness, I hadn't even thought of it yet. So I've lost a month. I've lost however much time you feel you've lost. Well, that creates a problem. So Mike, let's continue to, because I know this can be translated into sales thinking. If your goal was to lose 10 pounds this year, that's pretty, although that's a very specific goal and it's got a timeline on it by the end of the year and a solid number, what would you do with that? If you just say, I'm going to lose 10 pounds this year, I think you set yourself up for that scenario I said, where you find yourself right before Thanksgiving and realize, I haven't accomplished that, and and now I've made it a lot tougher. So what would you do with that to make sure you keep yourself accountable and on track? Yeah, I think you're, to your point, you what you do is you establish those step goals. So you reverse engineer, you design backward how you might get to that point. So So let's say... And I'm going to do this just for simple math. I'm going to say we're going to lose 12 pounds. 
just because there's 12 months in the year. And my goal now is lose one pound a month. If I can lose one pound a month, I'm going to achieve my goal. Now, at the end of the year, I should be down 12 pounds if I lose one pound, one pound a month. So that tells me if every month has about four weeks, plus or minus, you, we need to lose about a quarter pound in any given week. And I know over the course of the year, there are going to be these periods of time where I'm going to kind of indulge and I'm going to you know, enjoy whatever it is I might be enjoying. It might be you know, over Cinco de Mayo. It might be over the 4th of July. It might be during March Madness. It might be during Thanksgiving. There are going to be these points where I'm going to kind of pick things up. So realistically, there are going to be months where I may not lose that pound. So I might design the year where in one month, I may want to lose two pounds. In another month, I may feel okay being flat or I may even be, all right, gaining a pound. But I'd want to design something where I've got some of these short-term metrics that I can use to evaluate whether or not I'm moving in the right direction. If I find after the first month that I'm not building enough opportunities, tying this back into sales, or I'm not moving enough projects through my pipeline, tying it into project management, or I'm not delivering the right things in a uh, the right features or functionality things from a product perspective, then I've got to reevaluate those goals. And I've got to say, is it still realistic that I can drop the 12 pounds? Is it still realistic that I can accomplish all of those goals? And if, if it is, how do I need to adjust my monthly goals to align with the general objective? So the key piece here is having some kind of a mechanism that you've got in your day-to-day workflow where you can kind of keep track of whether or not you're going through those guideposts. And what I find is a really good tool for this kind of stuff are, are Google Docs. And I just add numbers into a spreadsheet. Like right now, I'm working on a goal. around. Um, it's, it's not really even a goal because I haven't established the number, but an objective around pull-ups. And so I keep the pull-ups that I can do on a daily basis during a given routine in a Google spreadsheet to just keep track of how I'm improving. Am I able to add volume? Am I finding that I'm not able to add volume or I'm not able to complete a workout? And all of those data points, I then use to say, am I making progress or am I off path and do I need to course correct? Yeah, that sort of thing is so helpful to have that in place. And and I've found that it works with a personal goal, like weight loss or pull-ups, but it also works in business too. I set goals every year and I used to set too many and I slowly, maybe three years ago, I put it down to 10 and said no more than 10 goals. And after doing that, I found I've cut back even more. I think for 2018, I set seven and then at some point throughout the year, abandoned probably three of them and said, this just doesn't matter. Things have changed since I set this goal. And maybe that's something we can talk about too. But I said, that does, this doesn't matter anymore. And so I dropped those. So I went to the or closed out the year really only working on what, four, four or five goals that uh, I set. So for me, that has really helped. And it's odd to think, okay, you set less goals and now you get even more done, but that's really how it has, has worked. I said, these are the most important things. Everything else I do will be flowing towards these. And it has really helped me out. And it's helped me maintain focus and momentum rather than having so much that I'm working on that it feels like I never get anything done. Yeah. And we, and we, you know, we talked about, I think this in the, is it Keller's book, The One Thing, when we did the book review and we talked mm-hmm. about the focusing question. And you've got to, everybody out there, you've got to feel comfortable with the idea that you can say no to a goal. Right? Like you can readjust you know, everything, nothing, none of this stuff is written in stone, unless you happen to be one of those people who chisels stuff in stone and that's how you, that's how you keep track of your stuff. But I mean, like none of this stuff is in stone. It is easy, it is important for you to reassess the work that you're doing and continue to iterate. Failure is okay. Failure is how you learn through this process. And it starts to get a little bit too philosophical and, and maybe we need to bring things back to the more tangible pieces. But I'll ask this question. 
is it better to set 10 goals and not execute on any of those because you're forced into some kind of procrastination because you feel like you're doing the work, but you're not really moving things forward? Or would you rather set three goals or even one goal and execute on that one and then move on to the next? And how much more can you accomplish if you take that second approach versus the first approach? Yeah, it's a good way to look at it. And you can look at the same thing with your with your day too. And I I mentioned day, even though we're talking bigger in years, I mentioned day because losing control of your days is why already at this point of the year, you might feel like you've lost your momentum. Yep. I'm four weeks in, I've made no progress on my goal. Well, that's because you've lost control of your days. And if you focus on less in a day, say this is the one thing I'm going to get done, my list for the day usually is no more then seven things, sometimes I get it up to nine. I try not to. I love to have it under six. These are the things I'm going to work on today. Sometimes it's as simple as a phone call, but that phone call moves me towards what needs to get done. And you control that day and you won't lose the momentum on the the bigger item. And like Mike said, would you rather set one goal and make progress or 10 goals which feels, Mike talks often about, about the feeling of getting stuff done, even when you're not. If you set 10 goals, that for a moment will feel like you accomplished something. But really, you didn't except set goals. But if you set fewer goals, you can actually move yourself towards those. And with your day, if you set fewer tasks, fewer things you're going to accomplish that day, then you won't lose momentum in your day. You'll control that day. And then you get four weeks in, six weeks later, however long, you won't feel like you lost momentum because you controlled every single day leading up to it. And if you're really clear about setting your success criteria around this and measuring that, coming up with some things, whether they're steps that you're checking the box on and able to look at the data that shows up on an iPhone, or it's a couple of X's that you put inside a Google Doc saying that you accomplished that thing, or it's looking at your CRM data to say, these are the activities, or these are the meetings that I have, or these are the opportunities that I'm creating, and these are the stages that they're in. If you're really good at keeping track of those metrics, you should be able to shine that lens back behind you. Look at the last 30 days and say, what did I accomplish? Even look at yesterday. What did I accomplish? If I didn't accomplish what I wanted to, what got in the way? How do I avoid those things that got in the way? How do I avoid them in the future? Know that there's always going to be things that pop up. Like uh, somebody's going to pull out in front of you when you're driving and you're going to get into an accident. Someone is going to send an email to you that has a bunch of all caps letters and make it thing, seem like it's the most important and urgent thing in the world. And it all of a sudden is everything that you've got to focus on. Those things are going to happen. There are some things that will happen that you just can't control. But if you start to compartmentalize and find time to to work on those things that you can't control and put them, batch them into certain areas, then you can do so much more with the time that you plan to actually execute. And I know Lee's got some great stuff out there around time management and the time management course. And we talk about that often. We mentioned it a couple of times and we'll have a link in the podcast to it. And we've got uh, some episodes where we talk about time management and doing the right things. But I think the, the key piece that I'd want the, all of you who are listening, you know, as we're talking about this, or if we were going on a one, in a one-on-one coaching dis- discussion, it would be list out the things that you're spending time on in your day. List out the things that your, your goals, your primary objectives, the things that are important, but not urgent, but are going to actually lead to success aligned to the goals that you've established. Start to draw correlations between the things you're spending time on in a given day and those things that are going to lead success. If you're doing a lot of stuff that's not going to lead to long-term success, figure out a way to let go of it. All of this requires doing the work though. You can go through and do the motions. And going back to one of my favorite movies, which we're just past that season, but you can be a washing machine. Don't be the washing machine. Go out there and take a very process-oriented, regimented approach to establishing your goals, identifying what success looks like, measuring against that, reflecting it on it, evaluating it, and moving forward. 
Yeah, that is wonderful. And I, I think once you understand what matters and you know what matters to you and what you're working towards, you won't have time anymore for what doesn't matter. But it's a process of getting to that place where you understand. And you mentioned Lee Cockrell, and I really recommend his Morning Magic Planner, which he actually gives away for free on his website. That will help you get control of your day. And like we've already said, once you control your day, you're not going to lose your momentum. Well, Mike, as we begin to wrap this episode up, give us some final encouragement. If, if we've already started to lose that momentum and the enthusiasm for what we're going to accomplish this year, just give us that final piece of encouragement. I don't know how encouraging this thing, this is going to sound, but you're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. You know, none of us are perfect out there. So realize and be open to the idea that you're going to fail and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to learn from each of those mistakes. But keep focused on learning. There is nothing that you can do to change that past. But what you can do is you can create as you go into the future. So if you've dropped the ball on some of those New Year's resolutions, if you're still hanging around on the uh, the eggnog and the sugar cookies and all the other stuff, if you've not been able to get into the gym or if you go to the gym and you spend more time walking on the treadmill than you do moving weight around, and know you can do better tomorrow, get yourself refocused. Start with just one thing. And once you've been able to execute on that, add a couple of more. And I just want to thank everybody for listening to the podcast, continuing to share it with others out there by you sharing it, by you rating the podcast, by you providing your reviews, more people become aware of it and more people learn from this and, and we can make a bigger impact. So thank you. Well, yes. Wonderful way to end it. Thank you. This We're glad you're with us for another year. Or if you're new to the show, we're glad you've joined us for this year. It's going to be a great year for the podcast and hopefully it'll be a great year for you too in all that you hope to accomplish. So if you enjoy the show, Please share it with other people. Introduce them to the show. Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you for listening to the Catalyst Sale Podcast.